Adikta Batra and Mangala Malu. Well, you'd have to say the market is so quiet these days. I mean, there's absolutely nothing happening. It is a complete market, so range bound. In fact, the needle has not moved at all in the last two hours. The market is expecting, but by and large, you'd have to say at least the volatility that we saw. In or so something that the market has put behind it, which I think the bulls would take with both hands. Whether we pick up from here, only time will tell. But for now, it's a you know, wonderful thing, mainly because it's a truncated week. We have yeah. a holiday on Thursday. The next week is a truncated week. Holiday uh, on Tuesday, and uh, you know uh, the day after that, uh, the Friday after that as well. It's a three-day yeah, week. Just counting and all of that, that doesn't have, mean that uh, the markets are not trading rest of no, the days. No, no, the <laughs> markets are trading on those days, but the volumes would be extremely thin. Yeah. It's the last few days of yeah. behind, uh, you know, before the financial sure, season yeah. ends, the financial year, and then everyone's eyeing all the results season and management commentary ahead of all those news factors. Maybe it's the calm before the storm. Let's enjoy it. Let's enjoy it. I absolutely agree. And all the holidays coming up, you know. Absolutely. I know and, and uh, you know one part is the holidays, it's consolidation definitely for the frontliners but one thing which is standing out to me is the broader market underperformance. Mm. I don't want to yeah. throw cold water over you know the holidays but nonetheless there is this mid and small cap underperformance which is taking place in today's trading session. We saw signs of it yesterday and it seems to be exaggerated today. For example a week to date basis already at current reckoning. We have the mid cap index which is lost around a percent and the small cap index which is down more sharply at around two odd percent. So it's already lost around two odd percent at this point in time for the week. So let's see whether any kind of buying in specific stocks at lower levels for the broader markets but could be a possible pain point which would be emerging. But uh, the other big sector that we have been talking about has been the pharmaceutical space. In fact, it was higher in yesterday's trade it is on uh, seeing a bit of a decline it's down around 0.2 percent so let's put the fo focus on the pharmaceutical space is there anything to buy at these levels Nitya healthcare at Sanford Bernstein joins in on the show now Nitya hi welcome to the show well uh, you know yesterday we saw a bit of an up move in the pharmaceutical space it's fundamentally uh, different for pharmaceutical stocks say um, you know, uh, uh, a fortnight ago. Hard to comment on daily movements, uh, Ekta, but I think what I will say is uh, this year has been particularly difficult for the sector and I think a lot of the names that we like have come. And we do see is, is, is a worry that FDA action seems to be escalating. Uh, we have seen import alerts. We have seen companies not be, being able to clear their warning. We get a lot of 483 observations as well. So that does seem to be weighing on the sector this year a bit more than what we saw, let's say, last year. And of course, there are stock-specific catalysts as well that have played out. Uh, Sun has been a little weak after the concert acquisition. I think it's gaining a little bit now. Uh, but we like the name because we think they've actually secured the growth runway in the U.S. specialty business for a long time to come. And mm. so on and so forth. A lot of specific catalysts, but uh, I don't, I haven't seen anything specific in the last fortnight that's actually changed. Okay. Nitya, hi. Welcome to the show and thanks for being with us. You know, let's talk about specific stocks, right? Because you've recently upgraded Biocon. And it's interesting, I was going through your note where you say that the biosimilars business is very strong for Biocon. And not just that, they have a very good launch pipeline as well. But the stock has failed to impress investors over the last uh, year or so. Uh, do you think there is enough in these triggers for the stock to get out of its lull or its slumber? Yeah, I think we, have, we initiated on the name in 2020 and we have been relatively negative on the name because they have actually struggled to gain market shares uh, in the U.S. market in particular, right? So compared to what the management was promising, compared to where the sell side estimates were, uh, they've come up short. And the reason is they've had to compete against the likes of your big pharma and specialty guys like Pfizer, Amgen, Novartis, etc. in the U.S. market, and it's not an easy game. Right? Hmm. The reason we upgraded the name now is actually 
One, because we see a few things changing in the US biosimilars market. One, we do see some of the big pharma guys like Pfizer, uh, they're exiting, Biogen sold off their JV stake, Novartis spun off Sando. So it, it seems like biosimilars is not the attractive growth opportunity it was for big pharma specialty companies anymore and therefore they're stepping out and that creates space for incumbents like Biocon, Celtrion, Samsung, Bioepis. And we also see the regulatory pathway easing out. I think interchangeability should over a period of time become more uh, mainstream which lowers barriers again for somebody like a Biocon and some of the other incumbents as well, right? So we actually see the market being a bit more easier on quote unquote mm -hmm. traditional generic companies like uh, Biocon, Celtrion, et cetera. And that's one of the primary reason why we have warmed up to the whole biosimilar story for the next three to four years. And specific right. to Biocon, do see some interesting opportunities in the pipeline. We do see multiple launches coming through in the next two to three years. Adalimumab biosimilar, uh, Aspart biosimilar, uh, Aflibercept biosimilar. We think these three can be quite meaningful for them in the next three, four, three years. And therefore, we actually see acceleration in revenues. But the stock has actually not done well because at least so mm. far, it's actually been, a, been an over-promise, under-deliver kind of story. Uh, but given the changes that we see in the market, as well as a stronger pipeline in the future, we think uh, at these current levels, it looks pretty attractive. Right. Nitya, I just wanted your thoughts on a couple of other names as well. While, uh, you know, the pharmaceutical index is about 15% of its highs, a lot of stocks have corrected uh, or seen have seen much deeper corrections. Case in point, something like a Devis as well, which is down almost 40% from its highs. Uh, at what level does it start becoming attractive for you? I'm so sorry. I don't cover Divi, so I'll be unable to comment on them. <laughs> Any other stock that you believe, apart from Biocon, which has seen a much deeper correction? I, I have one talking? which uh, Nitya looks yeah. at quite closely, Manglam. That's Gland Pharma, uh, Nitya. You know, everybody is asking when they'll probably recover from that lull of earnings uh, disappointment that they've seen in the past two to three quarters. What do you think might be the biggest reason for the underperformance for Gland? When do you think they can probably come out of it? See, they have had some supply issues, but uh, setting those aside, which anyway is a one-time kind of an issue, I think the bigger challenge for the stock has been the end market has become a bit more competitive. Uh, we do see many more players on a per molecule basis than we used to before, right? So from what used to be seven to eight player market, it's now become a 15 player market. Uh, I do believe that the uh, barriers to entry in injectables have been artificially lowered because FDA hasn't been inspecting plants. Now that they are on the ground, we see what's happening with our plants, right? So Sun got an import alert. Sipla's uh, warning letter for their injectable Goa facility hasn't been cleared yet. Uh, Inta seems to be in trouble. Uh, mm -hmm. We will see more such inspections happen as well. And a lot of the Chinese companies which are aggressive in the injectable space in the U.S. haven't been inspected since 2018, 2019. Again, we know that FDA is expected to be on the ground in China starting next quarter. Mm. Um, so I think as more inspections happen, we will see how many of these players are actually able to manufacture at scale and compliantly like a gland can. Uh, and uh, we have seen this happen in, in the 2011-2012 in the period, right? Where again, FDA went around slapping warning letters and OAI and there was a bit of a churn in the market and the market stabilized at a lower competition level. Uh, mm. I am expecting something like that to play out here as well, but it doesn't happen overnight. It's going to take the next two, three years for it to play out. Uh, but okay. from a more F24 perspective, we do see some products in the base portfolio of Gland doing better. Okay. And that's the reason we think FI24, we believe the headline growth number should look much better than it has so far. Okay, I also wanted your thoughts on Aurobindo Pharma. Now, you know, that stock has been under a lot of pressure. I think a year ago, Aurobindo was at 750. Uh, I know it's had its fair share of problems, but now it's at 500, I think sub 500 as we speak. Uh, any thoughts on whether there are any triggers which could sort of get Aurobindo back to those 700, 750 levels? See, I think they have two challenges. One is that they actually have a very large base portfolio in the US and unfortunately not enough in terms of material launches coming through to cover up for the base erosion and help them grow. Uh, they have been investing in the right spaces, your complex gen injectables, inhalers, biosimilars, etc. Uh, but a lot of these are still some time away. Right? So I think we need to see more filings. We need to see more approvals come through uh, before the growth story starts to change. 
and they've also been investing aggressively in terms of manufacturing capacities a little ahead of the revenue curve uh they had invested quite significantly in vaccines they have i think invested in biosimilars manufacturing cap capacities injectable manufacturing capacities a lot of which as i mentioned before the revenues are at least a few years away uh so roces therefore aren't also looking healthy um i think we need to see more traction in filings and approvals before the stock starts to Okay, just a quick last question, Nitya. This uh, whole ransomware incident that took place with Sun Pharma yesterday. Uh, uh, how are you looking at it, and are you factoring in any kind of earnings impact on account of it? And if so, how much? See, unfortunately, there is not enough of a disclosure for us to do the math in terms of EPS impact or revenue impact. All that the company has disclosed is that there is some revenue impact. We don't really know what that sum is. uh but we did see dr reddy's face a similar issue and come out pretty much unscathed um so i think the market is generally assuming that sun pharma should be able to manage this as well which is why the stock hasn't reacted negatively um our perspective is also that even if there is an impact it's likely to be more one time uh and therefore it doesn't there doesn't seem to be a need to correct either eps numbers or the multi Hey Nitya, we leave it at that. Thanks a lot. Very helpful uh, chatting about the industry, different companies. Always great speaking to you. Uh, that's Sanford Bernstein with their view on the pharmaceutical space, all the stocks you should avoid, all the stocks you should perhaps hold, and what the you know industry is doing at the moment. All right, let's do one thing. Uh, let us slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll focus on some of the stocks that are reacting to news updates coming up in a bit. Stay tuned.